fresh best of three. This time everything's working. Got my audio working, got my cameras working, got everything working. Great. Top left of Gresvan. It is Lambo. In the bottom right, we have Spirit. Spirit's having a little bit more difficulty with Geralt than I anticipated, but uh, did eventually beat him. And then Lambo defeated uh, someone a little while ago, actually. Trigger. So, no ZVTs for them yet. Generally thinking upon both of their TVZ ZVT matchups. I think it's actually really hard to call. Cool. Hmm. Thought if I just built up to an answer, then my my gut would tell me something. But my gut uh, my gut is also confused. I don't. Uh, my gut, heart, and brain are all either checked out or or, or just can't can't decide. Lambo has the ability to play this matchup really well. Occasionally tackle the best TVZers. But I would say in the open cups is much more likely to fall in this matchup than the other ones. Although he didn't have a super fun experience versus Max Packs either in his EVP. For Spirits, I would say that he is still riding a new high. As far as the skill level goes, I do think uh, what's probably happened in the last, uh, basically since 2023 started, is that he jumped and then he fell again. You know, he peaked, right? And he fell again, but he fell at a new level, which is generally how getting better really works. There's even usually a period of time before you peak, but while you're actually doing quite poorly. Um, not that I'm into sports psychology that much or anything like that. But I think he got to the point where he was playing probably the best he's ever played, and he can play that again occasionally, but as far as the level that he settled on, uh, it's not as impressive as the times that, you know, he took down Rainer in the Open Cup. That was one of the uh, times that all of us were like, okay, this is for real. He played well in uh, Katowice, and yeah, it's, uh, it's back to kind of normal, where Spirit has a certain anticipated ability to defeat, like, certain pros. Oh! Yeah, okay, it's barely saved his run. But he has the ability to beat certain pros. He's probably add, added that list of, uh, I can beat these guys consistently. He's probably added a few pros to that list. But overall, doesn't have the, like, the same, um, sporadic jump up in skill that he seemed to have earlier this year, in which he could defeat literally the best players in the world, such as... Uh, well, Rainer being really one of the highlights of this particular matchup. I would say that he would struggle against Lambo if Lambo was playing particularly good. If Lambo was actually kind of playing at his general skill, open cup, ZVT. I think Spirit is the favored one, but yeah, you can tell that there's a lot of things going into my mind that I can't really say who's, who's actually favored. And I don't know if they actually play each other all that often either. Just coincidentally not matching each other. Uh, do the seeding. Occasionally, Lambo doesn't sign up as well. I think the Lambo is a less consistent sign up than Spirit, but I'm not sure about that. It is a regular 3cc build versus macro build from the Zerg player, so you guys are not missing anything while I prattle on here. And Lambo. Checking out a League of Lack. They play about once every month. Not in the Open Cups, just in general tournaments. Yeah, for the last four months. Most recently, Lambo did defeat Spirit in the Africa TV Champions Cup qualifier. But prior to that, a very recent Spirit defeated him in a best of five, three, one. So it's generally Spirit favored, which kind of lines up with what I'm thinking. Generally Spirit favored. Lambo has a particularly good day. Um, not like one of his best days ever, just a good day. I think he can also tackle Spirit. We do have the Stim now on the way alongside a Liberator, so really one of the more basic builds that a Terran player can do. Interestingly enough, there is a Tech Lab on the Starport prior to making the Liberator, so that might have been able to come out a little bit faster. Maybe not. Maybe it really is that tight of a build, but I was going to say maybe he's also planning on moving it over to the factory eventually. Because uh, he's clearly not going into Battle Cruisers uh, or cloaked banshees. I guess he could still get a raven after this. That makes sense. He would have enough resources for it. Perhaps. No. Okay. Oh, just gonna swap it off eventually to something else. Alright then. Over analysis, donezo. I did have fun at home, Stray Cup. Thank you. 
Uh, and then again, just like regular barracks subsides that. So what is Lambo scouted? Not very much. He's been able to determine that it is a 3cc build based off the front, I would believe. Uh, he is going for a fast carapace. Does he believe that this might be a 2 on one He might have, but once the Hellions reveal themselves, that's, of course, out of the picture. But those Hellions remain at home for a lengthy period of time, so Lambo might have been a little confused as to what the follow-up was, right? Whether it's going to be Hellions and Banshees or uh, two Barracks, one one one, uh, two one one rather, you know, whatever it was. But now he has a much clearer picture. He scouted the Hellions, he scouted the third CC, and I believe he just scouted the Head Liberator, yes, because it tried to attack him. And so far, I've been very unsuccessful. So Lambo might have been a little cautious in the beginning. Uh, now is very much on the right track. Got enough resources to up that plus two or plus one melee as well. I said two because I do notice a mistake on the extractor, which I don't believe is intentional. And perhaps it was. Or he just noticed it. Either way. <laughs> he fixes it. So layers on the way, 1-1, one, one, and yes, very typical TDZ, which Spirit has been able to... Oh, I was going to say macro to perfection, but no. What is this, me playing? Come on now. Uh, but seriously, that's a big mistake because really nothing has happened. This is very unforced error. He has not even really been doing all that much in terms of harassment, so it's not like he's been thousand APM all over the place to make a mistake back at home. Uh, this would be a very ideal situation to, you know, basically practice a build order, almost like you're first forcing AI. And AI has very good future, but, but uh, yeah. So Spirit making a bit of a mistake there, quick to recover, and is moving on to a fourth base. So we're heading into late game TVZ. As it is Gressvon, I guess I should not expect anything else, but, you know, there could have been a huge potential for the abuse of this particular location, as we usually talk about. Does it work all the time, 100% of the time? No. It works 100% of the time, 50% of the time. There's a little push into this well here, but Spirit didn't really do a build that was particularly frightening. You know, two tanks very reserved out here after taking so long to actually make as they first produced Hellions, then they produced a reactor, then they went on a tech lab that they themselves built. So they didn't even use the Starport tech lab. That went over to a barracks. In fact, another supply block. Okay, just, I don't mean to be witnessing these. It's every time I look back at Spirit, he's having one, which isn't a great sign. That's a, a little uh, off today, because he's once again supply blocked. I think he expected his fourth command center to finish up a little bit faster, but there we go. Finally, truly unsupply blocked. Uh, been noticing a lot of stuff from Spirit. Now let's move on to Lambo. Lambo at eight minutes still does not have Banelink speed. That is slightly concerning. Uh, Banelink speed not going to finish him back until probably 8.40. Oh no, 8.30. Okay, 8.30. Which means in time to defend his third base technically, but not in time to use the creep spread moving out into that well. A uh, little late on the pullback ends up being a pull up. As the medevacs just lift and leave with what they can, the rest of the army going to get swarmed, and Lambo will break this with a, uh, I guess, overall safe opener. The bailing speed was a little concerning, but we didn't really have any any problems with Banelink's connecting as Spirit was on creep and was immediately swarmed and surrounded. So. Banelink speed might have an issue in different types of situation, but not that one. And now it's done. Plenty of lings left over. Upgrades even, and in fact, about to be favorable for Lambo. Give it 30 seconds. So that plus two carapace was figured out, was added on very, very quickly. Remember, he added a faster plus one carapace in the opening of this game, possibly, because he wasn't sure what Spirit was doing. But uh, Spirit now is moving over into just pure bio Widow Mine. He does have Drilling Claws done. His own upgrades are about 30, 40 seconds away. Once again, forced to lift off. Lots of carnage from the Widow Mines, however. A lot of Ling's dead. And the drops will continue. As there is nothing that really uh, settles the anti air problem for Lambo. His five queens, hardly enough to even get injects and creep spread. Has he lost many? Yeah, he lost five at some point. And, uh, of course, no Vipers yet, as that hive has only just begun. Sporecrawler and Queen is all he's got. Good target fire on the weakened Medivacs, and Spirit's not really going to push his luck any further up there. Doesn't seem like there's much point to it, as this really is just a matter of Lambo moving his army on creep, speedy, speedy, you know. Medivacs aren't going to do a whole lot. If this were to add in a uh, second attack or a second drop, such as this Widowmine drop, then 
perhaps there's more potential. But this one of my drop also not doing a whole heck of a lot. Only four drones killed on a big deal for Zerg player, who is settled on five bases, replaces the eight drones. In fact, very quickly, and that hive is almost done. But Spirit has been a macro monster, besides the couple of supply blocks. Uh, he's got four bases set up, fifth base on the way, sixth base on the way as well. All the production at eight barracks and two factories, and has at least started up that plus three attack. Perhaps a little late to his Marauder slow. Not that it usually matters in this matchup so much, but matters a lot more is having your units all collected together in a fine formation, which it looks like Spirit was missing out on. Lambo was more than happy to jump on top of that. Spirit, perhaps not expecting the Zerg player to be this aggressive, was caught off guard and might be paying for it. It looks like his army might stand strong enough under the power of the healing of the Medivacs, but the SCVs have certainly paid a price. 23 of them. We've got 25 go down. Command Center will remain intact despite the healthy number of painlings that rolled on past it. I think that was actually more of an issue as 25 SCVs can be quickly replaced thanks to the almost six Command Center setup that Spirit is on. It looks like the Woodmine drop also did finally come back into play. 12 drones went down, perhaps a little more. No Spork Roll around here to stop this Woodmine from firing a second time, so that could happen. Oh, Overseers are here, so it's still is a little bit of revenge for that, but that was really less than ideal for Spirit at the beginning. It seems like it was less than, uh, than ideal for Lambo at the end, who did not have the staying power or the remax power that perhaps he was hoping for. That bank was, uh, I guess, not considerable at the point in which he decided to engage, because the remax is really not here. And it's not a larva problem like I was thinking it might be. No, it's absolutely a mineral and gas problem. Now, once again, healthily mining mining, and having time to replace the army. Lambo also making time for himself by consistently threatening run buys. Should have time to replace his supply, but perhaps not a very healthy supply. You know, it's you could maybe get maxed out, but is it really going to be the best Zerg army possible? Doesn't seem that way. He has a lack of gas, so the uh, transition over into tier three, such as Vipers and Ultras, not going to be particularly powerful. Had enough gas to at least start up the upgrades for his Lings, 3-3 three, three, and Adrenal Glands, so that's, that is very good. And has become one of the more uh, top priorities of Zerg players as they head into the late game. But yeah, no Vipers, no Infestors, not that I think he's planning on that, and certainly no Ultras as of yet. If he does make ultras, it'll be maybe two or three. Banelings once again rolling through the third command center, and Spirit loses eight SCVs, but perhaps more importantly gets a fly block once again. Drop from Spirit in the main base of Lambo, sees the hive technology, and sees the intention to get to those ultras, but that's not the only thing happening here. Spirit actually immediately counterattacking as the run by continues on. It might meet some resistance at the planetary, but no attention paid there for Spirit, who will lose it, as well as more SCVs. Now more desperate to get the damage done on the counterattack. However, low on the units, low on the splash, and forced to pick up. It looks like Lambo will be able to chase this down, stop it from, oh, I was gonna say, unloading, but I was wrong. It does unload, but so many Banelings still available, even with Marauders and Ghosts. You do not want to just let them tank the Banelings like that. That would be less than ideal. Carnage every which way we're looking right now, guys, but Spirit remains ahead in that supply, in those upgrades as well. The Ultras Captain going to be denied, and a pickup of just one single Marine, but more importantly, four Medivacs will be able to escape. Spirit might have lost his third CC as well as his fourth base that was a planetary, but recall that he had two extra command centers? Or maybe he had one. Well, he... he Either way, he had extra command centers. So maybe one went to this fifth base. It got destroyed. Another one seems like it went up to the top right. So there is a planetary mining. And then we had another command center build at some point, which now floats over to replace that fifth. So basically, Spirit had that bank to get those extra command centers. It might have been a brief bank before everything went to shit. But it is a bank that now, as things calm down and settle, uh, I think puts the recovery process into a much better place than for Lambo. But it really has calmed down and once again evened out, at least in the supply. Technology is still a big concern for me, however, as Spirit is on Ghosts and of course upgraded Marauders and Marines, plenty of medivacs as well. And Lambo is still only on Ling Baneling. He does have some Vipers, I think they must be juiced up at this point. There you go, they just got juiced up. And I'm sure a parasitic bomb will be coming down, but only if they do not get EMP'd. Thank you very much. 47 is for the 80 months. Not big a in. Fungals are coming out as well, and I do like seeing that. Something to take these ghosts out of the equation. 
but Lambo is not really in the prime Zerg position. Once again, losing drones as well to the Wood of Mine drops. Down at 60 drones. Uh, base count's fine, but drone count absolutely is not, and he is still on a very cost inefficient army. Lings and Banelings going to be mostly sacrificial when they engage. And Spirit's not the one that's wanting for economy anymore. He's got all of his bases set up once again with a mineral surplus, so he's adding on extra command centers. And his army really is, I feel like, complete. So not only is his army complete, but the situation of the game, of the map, is also favorable for Terran. Very little creep spread in some of the major contention points for Lambo. And of course, Lambo just not set up to really do any sort of run by or surround. He was dealing with all those Widow Mine drops. So he's coming in a bit late, so less than ideal situation. He is going to come in for the big surround. Ghost Cloak up. EMPs are slapped down, I think, on the Infestors. Not gonna stop Lambo from taking this out. Holy shit, that last Widow Mine shot. That must have been 30 lings right there. Last second EMP as well before the units just escape. Do not kill your own medivacs with one of mine. Lambo almost getting a helping hand anti-air wise <laughs> with that wood of mine. So many weakened medivacs from earlier. And where are those vipers? Oh, the vipers might have been miscontrolled or misplaced. I'm not sure, honestly. It looks like maybe they were part of the surround team and were just late to the party, but a parasitic bomb would do wonders. So many injured medivacs still. We also have a little shark attack set up, actually more than one. However, the EMP, EMPs did their job. These infestors will have to wait some time before they actually have that fungal available. Lambo is still working off of, let's see, three mining bases. Whenever this gets back to mining, that is. Liberator harassment is good stuff. More liberated harassment taking out some queens as well. And Lambo is in a lot of trouble hanging on, but by a thread. As Spirit finds himself in one of the comfiest positions for a Terran player. He got another EMP up on the Vipers, I believe, so they are just forced to retreat. No Parasite Bomb once again as the Medivacs are able to lift and leave. No Fungal either, which would have also done the trick if the energy was there. And oh, you know what? Speaking of a lot of no's, there was no Overseer. The Ghost just continued to do damage, and Lambo sees that the pace has been set. The momentum was not going to let up, and Spirit was inevitably going to win. So he taps out. GG. <clears throat> Game two, move on to Babylon. Certainly a smaller map than our last. The top left down one. He is Lambo. The bottom right. We have Spivit playing out a nice game of macro TVZ, despite some mistakes in the early to mid game with those supply blocks. The rest of the game was pretty much by the book. Yeah, I do think there were some opportunities for Lambo. Absolutely opportunities, in fact. Some of those counterattacks or unexpected aggression from his army really did seem to catch Spirit off guard, but never quite did the overwhelming thing. And I think that is something that uh, aggressive Zergs can find troublesome to predict, you know? Uh, aggressive as in when they're maxed out with Ling Baneling or close to maxed out with Ling Baneling, not Roach Rushes or something like that. Uh, but you know, trying to engage offensively you know especially when the Terran player isn't paying attention that is the ideal and then trying to overwhelm get lings into every nook and cranny all the bases all the SCV lines all the production creates a lot of problems and sometimes is the killing blow a Terran player uh, basically it's over aggressive and then can't uh, compact their army back home defensively fast enough and then the Zerg player takes advantage of that and perhaps even wins. Lambo has done that many times. I think he has proved to be a somewhat lethal in this matchup the more that he's improved on it. Whereas perhaps two or three years ago, I would have said that, yeah, you can win, but I just don't consider him all that scary. But that just didn't work out last time. And I think that is really difficult for a Terran player, uh, a Zerg player to predict. So whether or not that is the moment that is going to win them the game gather all the momentum and really shock and awe your opponent because sometimes it probably feels like a slam dunk like no problem I'm got, I've got this that Terran player definitely wasn't paying attention 
um, can quickly seem to, uh, to fall into. Oh shit, I've run out of steam. <laughs> you know, these lings coming across the map are not, are not so great when they're coming in two at a time against bio with upgrades and medivacs. Hmm, shit. I have a co-commentator. We'd love to get their thoughts. <laughs> His thoughts are... He's too old for this shit. It's my old man. Third CC once again from Spirits. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And he is playing against someone who is definitely still known as a macro player. Lambo has added in plenty of cheeses in his time. And on certain maps as well. Uh, he's also done some different compositions. You know, he does Ling Hydra, he does Mass Ling Bane, he does Quick to Hive, he does Roaches occasionally, like 1-1 one, one Roach Attack. Not as prevalent in his uh, style of play as, for instance, Dark, but he does it. But generally, you're planning on a pretty predictable first five minutes, which is really when the 3cc gets kind of over the hump of being really quite defenseless. You start to actually work on your production. Ideally, you have some sort of map presence with Hellions, perhaps a Banshee or two. And you don't have to worry so much. Especially if your Reaper scouting's good. Which Spirit is uh, very active with his Reaper. I think he's been noticing Lambo most of the time. Goes for this later speed. You know, gets that third base in before the speed. He actually managed to... Uh, negate that. He managed to, to really interrupt the Lambo's build last game, which I didn't give much thought to. But with his denial of the third base, that kind of made things more awkward for Lambo, who does set on this 4.10 speed, was that? 4 minute speed? As opposed to what could be 3.30, you know, if you really wanted to. But the easy argument, uh, of course, against getting such fast speed is that is it really all that important? Maybe you can kill that Reaper faster and set up for a cheese if that's really your plan, but if it's not, <laughs> then you're just going to need speed for when the Hellions arrive. And the Hellions arrive, as you can see, four of them, about 4.30. Sometimes with that later speed, the Terran player will expedite their Hellion pressure, send two Hellions immediately across the field to try and, and get there before speed's done, but... Good queen presence control usually stops that from being an issue. Woo! That was the wrong mineral patch to go back to. Whoops a daisy. Well, that was just unlucky. Seriously, that was just, uh, that was crazy unlucky. Lambo could have chosen any of these mineral patches <laughs> to move back to. And those queens would have been a very effective wall. I think two drones go down instead of six. As it is, six is not the worst thing in the world. But this little drop really did. Uh, drop plus Hellion plus Liberator has definitely thrown Lambo a little off guard. Now getting back on track as far as the defense goes. Sportcrawler available. Woodaman was injured, so Queens take it out. And Lambo is trying his best to get his drones back to mining ASAP. Because that's probably more of the damage done a lot of the time. You know, the potential for direct damage like this, six more drones going down to the Reaper Hellion squad is, is up there. But let's say that a lot of the time Lambo doesn't take that much damage, that much direct damage. He probably takes damage uh, with his lack of mining. You know, he's constantly pulling the drones away, moving his spore crawlers, pulling them back, putting them back in the gases. So he might have been trying to fix that up and kind of inadvertently, you know, he tried to fix one thing and the other thing raise its ugly head, head again. <laughs> for that, it's just straight up drone damage. 12 drones killed, a queen as well, at some point. All four of the units that Spirits is not really all that concerned about. They don't add in that much pressure when they turn to hell Hellbats. I know we talk about that, but it's usually not the biggest issue. And the two Widow Mines, while costlier in gas, actually kind of replace the fifth and sixth Hellion you often see. So it's not like the factory was off of its tech lab for, for that much longer. It's already produced at least one tank, working on the second. Bunker once again for Spirit, really setting up very similar to last game. Not identical, of course, but very similar. And for Lambo, he is definitely doing something different. He is adding on those Hydras very quickly. A little more anti-air. Uh, his own queen is attacking this queen. I just noticed that. <laughs> Spirit kind of did him a favor by 
jumping on his queens, making them notice. Now they are paying attention and transfusing well. A couple of cheeky Baneling snipes right there, but eventually the two medivacs do have to leave. We gotta start with three. Yeah, okay, so the queens would kill one. Upgrade should be starting soon for Spirit as well. Armory only seconds late, so immediately starting that 2 2. Lambo is only not even actually halfway to 1 1. Just barely getting there as I'm speaking. More pressure from the two Medivacs, but that is the only pressure on the field right now. Spirit continues just to build up back at home. Three bases, eight barracks, by the way, guys. So he is actually really changing things up. Didn't notice that initially, but eight barracks, additional three were added on here. He is going to really have a lot of pressure. And Lambo might not be expecting this, considering how the last game went. Sports a different map, and I think this uh, eight racks first is much more popular on a map like Babylon. But does Lambo actually recall, uh, basically recall that in the heat of the moment? Because he's busy dealing with all of these drops and knowing that he took damage he wasn't supposed to, and so on and so forth. He might not be thinking about scouting for his opponent's fourth base. So far, I've seen nothing else that indicates that Lambo knows what's on the way. That doesn't mean he can't hold, of course. He has his army. He built up his drone count. He has his army. What he needs to be is in position. And maybe, uh, you know, try and buy some time. He has not been able to try and buy any time whatsoever. Spirit already making his way over to Lambo's side of the map. Choosing the north path here so he has this high ground advantage. You do sometimes see the Terran push just right here and slap the tanks every which direction you look at. But nope, concentrating his efforts over here. Now abusing the lack of creep spread as it has been cleaned up and Lambo is in some serious trouble. He's trying to get up to Vipers probably with his infestation pits, but that is a pipe dream right now as he has to tackle this engagement right here, right now. Marine's already pre-split to Spirit. Now pays attention, stims and prepared to micro his little heart out. It might have been better had he done it earlier though. Yeah, he, uh, he actually didn't really protect his tanks, funnily enough. Uh, because of that. So, I mean, it's so more concerning for Lambo, I would say, who is very low on his Baneling count, and that's usually the real killer of defending this eight racks. The pressure is so consistent, and the amount of army being thrown at you is so sizable that it's not really as easy as saying, oh, I'll just leave some Banelings behind because I know, you know, I'm going to need them. And sometimes you need every last Baneling on the attack, and you're just praying that it is enough to really send the Terran packing. If it's not, and you expend all of your Banelings, just 16 Marines, maybe only 10, would ruin your dreams. But the Baneling count has improved once again. Lambo holding on to his third, fourth, fourth base. He also has a fifth in the bottom left, by the way, which is uh, not being harassed whatsoever. 2-2 Two -two is done for Spirit as he once again is on this high ground. Once again, Marines pre-splits. But uh, I'm actually not sure how much I like the pre-split. Uh, okay, picks up, picks up. Uh, Spirit Supply is still totally fine, so I'm going to hold off on my critique until after the game, but there is some downside to how he was been uh, handling those engagements. The upside is that he almost always is going to have army to retreat with, you know? He's almost always going to be able to come back and say, no, I am not actually dislodged. I am back here on the front lines abusing your lack of creep spread, so... Uh, certainly some benefits, no doubt about that. Also finally had an attack over the bottom left. Lambo not in any way capable of defending that hatchery. Just gives it up. It's the only thing he can do. He finally is on that hive technology, instantly grabbing the adrenal glands, but not the vipers. He has the gas, he has the minerals, and he doesn't have his positioning. Oh no. Oh, what was that army doing over there? It looks like Lambo was not expecting the army to already be on the front lines yet again, so he had split his army in preparation of perhaps dealing with drops, or perhaps to get a concave while the Terran army moved up the ramp, and he just didn't realize. Lambo losing a huge chunk of very expensive army, so many of his Hydras, that are really supposed to remain forever alive. Like, they're, they're the units that are supposed to be retained. The Lings and Banelings are the ones that get sacrificed. It's a huge mistake. And Spirit has a Corp done enough damage that he can move over into a fourth base. He's got his upgrades on the way. Now moving over into Marauders as well as Ghosts. That is actually a steep price for someone who's still not on four base setup. But he really has managed to take some very efficient trades. Oh my god. I mean, especially with the top right <clears throat> Hydra army being caught like that. And now going for a big old drop onto the main base of the Zerg. You know this, I usually don't like this because it puts you onto creep, but I don't think there's any denying this is a power move right here. 
Vipers are ready though, and that's something that Spirit might not have anticipated as his tanks are taken out of the equation. He is on creep. The Lings and Banelings getting those surrounds, trying to get those connections, and that should be enough Zerg Army to handle this. So perhaps I still feel validated in my dislike of such drops, but it's also uh, definitely a concern that Spawning Pool is dead, the Bailing Nest is dead, dead. Of course, hatcheries have died in this game as Lambo is now only on three bases producing. Uh, he's, he's not having enough larva. He does not have a lot. Lambo is certainly on the last... Ooh, good snipes there from Spirit. Uh, Lambo is on his last life. The last reds, whatever he's hanging on to, or saw in a calm apart, you know? Like, Lambo is keeping his head above water, but just barely. He's got to take some really nice engagements, and spellcasters generally help you do that, taking what he can grab, a couple of medevacs, better than nothing, and they're kind of free. Vipers will have time to juice up once again. A Lambo is missing creep spread, he's missing hatcheries, he's missing economy, even with four bases finally set up again. He is mining out of his minerals in his main and natural. He's only at 65 drones, which is just not a good sign for Zerg players we had into late game. And while this would have been okay if Spirit was very desperately on his own three bases still, he's not. I mean, he's, he's a fourth base planetary forming. Which, you know, it's not, it's not quick. It was not quick, but he's been almost maxed out this entire time because his trades have just been so freaking efficient. I mean, it's, just, it's, it's TVZ, right? It's, it, the Zerg player is going to be a little less efficient, and it's a battle of just making it good enough, uh, especially as you continue to take bases in, in the economy. And trying to match the flow and pacing set by an 8-Rax player can be extremely difficult. Even if you hold against that, you might find yourself in this position, this exact position, one in which you're like, well, I'm alive, but I'm not exactly thriving. And the more that I do not thrive, the more the Terran player gets into their super comfortable place, you know? Maybe Spirit wasn't comfortable on even four bases because the fourth was so late and he's trying to afford a late game transition. But now it's been minutes. Fourth base has been saturated, fifth base on the way, sixth also being built, Spirit starting to build up a bank, I mean, he just gets more and more comfortable. Lambo does not. I don't know what was that. Uh, drop, I suppose. <laughs> I, I guess. Four Vipers now, and 43 Banelings. That is a hefty count of Banelings. Only five tanks, of which four of them are in the front lines now. One very injured. Vipers would take all of these tanks out of the equation if they aren't EMP'd. But that is an issue. Are they going to be EMP'd? And here we go! Blinding Cloud, at least one of them goes down. A couple more are getting EMP'd as Spirit is forced to retreat further and further back. He will abandon his siege tanks, which might be a concern as we watch the Roly Poly on through it. Let's see how much damage this does. Ghost Run! No! There's a lot of the ghosts will survive. The Spirit Supply has plummeted. Lambo taking one of his best engagements yet has really evened up the resources lost. Gives me a lot more hope here, but still in trouble in other ways in this game. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, though, but I had to wait until that battle was over, was that this is the biggest drawback of doing an 8-Rax into a macro game. The factory production. You do not have a lot of factory production. You can. You can add on a second factory probably uh, instead of this Ghost Academy. Like, that's probably a direct trade. And a lot of Terran players would have, once they started up their fourth base and kind of moved away from the 8-Racks, they probably would have added a second factory. But Spirit waited a very long time to add on additional factory production, so now he boosted it up to three factories, and had he not taken uh, his worst fight yet, I think he would have been totally A-OK -okay on the right track, 100%, but those factories were late. Those are the only things making his game uncomfortable, was his lack of splash. Now with three factories, he might be able to get up to the ideal tank count, but the Vipers are still in play. EMPs and Snipes coming down, however, just completely smack this away. I'm a little surprised that Lambo's insisting on continuing to engage, but it is one of those tough decisions for the Zerg. When they're getting sniped to death, do you try and tackle the engagement, or do you actually just accept your losses and fully retreat? And Lambo does eventually fully retreat. But that was uh, definitely one of the better fights for Spirit. Um, yeah, it's like the resources trading out here really is telling the tale. We could just watch this number go back and forth and really have a better, uh, the best idea as to how this game is going. But like I said, now that Spirit is on multiple bases, he didn't just build the command centers, he now actually has them planted down, turning into planetaries, and he has three factories. 
This is really the most ideal setup for a Terran player. The Zerg is still missing, I would say, one of the better economies they can grab. You know, and and the base count is small here on Babylon. You're you're quickly running out of uh, your bases, and you're getting into the contested ones. Uh, it, creep spreads a problem, hatch counts a problem, army is less of a problem. This is pretty much what you would want to be on as you head into late game TVZ. But reserve players, you'd want to have a like 2,000 2,000 bank behind this, and then you'd feel really comfortable. Also upgrades, which Lambo had to be a little bit later too. Just the way that this matchup goes. 3-3's three, been done for Spirit for a while. Lambo only just now finishing his plus three carapace and Overlord speed, which I think is usually gotten earlier too. A couple SCVs went down, the third CC being cracked, but this third CC will continue to be a vulnerable point, something that the Terran players have to accept, whether it be on Babylon or Gressvon. Both of them have that six o'clock base being just a little too difficult to hold on to. Or this base is almost never gotten, and then whatever this is, the five o'clock base, is <laughs> hard, hard to hold on to. But the bigger issue is setting up to the top side. Lambo has to crack this before the Terran player is really well set up. It's already planetary time, though, so it's not the best. But it looks like Spirit did not have quite the reinforcements necessary to hold on here. As planetary gets destroyed, that does cost most of the Banelings. And Spirit still has some ghosts looking for the snipes. He's going to get a couple of them, but the Overseers are here. The Ghost Cloak will not save the day. Spirit Force do a little bit of F2, no doubt. Bring these reinforcements forward, and Lambo does overstay his welcome. Hydra is left by their lonesome, cannot tackle the upgraded bio with Medifax. And that was a return, I suppose, of trades. It was like initially pretty Lambo favored and then Spirit uh, started to actually get in there. So it was uh, a wash at the end of it, I suppose. As the supplies get very, very similar. That seems to be the case. And unfortunately for Lambo, that's, uh, that base crack could have been game changing if there wasn't already an extra command center. The fact that this is already being set up again defensively is a really, really, really tough time for the Zerg. I mean, you really, with a almost complete wipe like that, except for the Hydras saying overstaying, you really wish that this means that you now take control here, basically. The Terran player is now moving on to only defending these bases. That is not the case. Already back onto the one o'clock base. I'm gonna get me a clock ASAP. Um, and then that means that he's gonna pressure Lambo's 12 o'clock base. So that's the real concern. Tank not in uh, as clever of a spot as you expect. Not with Vipers abducting. Lambo's trying to go for run buys. I believe that move with the reinforcements from Spirit was actually the army that was waiting in the natural. The ones that killed all his Hydras. So he has had to replace the army in the natural. Looks like it will hold the natural no problem but it will not be able to hold any third CC. And there is still some mining to be done here. Not just mining, but again, also kind of the idea that this could leapfrog over to this base at some point in time. It uh, certainly will not, as things line up right now. Spirit with one ghost on the field. Still manages to pressure this base. Lambo's going to retreat. He's going to give up on it. Did not have enough army to hold on to it. He is making the tough but wise decisions to continue on in this game. And perhaps should to be able to get this bottom left base set up, then it would be all worth it. He's got this base set up, and he would love this base. Kind of taking away a base from your opponent, but Spirit also redirecting his aggression to match Lambo's redirected expansion. He's been able to take some decent, uh, decent trades. Lots of drones going down here. Not pulled back from the mining. Oh, so many drones are going to go down. Everything just going to shit. In 30 seconds, Lambo Supply down in the dumpster. One blinding cloud trying to catch a lot of bio. It's still able to retreat back to the safety of the reinforcements. Tanks, Ghost, Marines, oh my. And this base was also continued to be uh, denied. I think it was maybe... Oh, it was this base. This base was denied. I saw a blue moving on the top side. Knew that something else was happening. And that something else was a continued removal of Lambo's economy. I mean, it's almost completely removed at this point. His first three bases are completely mined out. This base is actually close to being mined out. It's it's down to this one. That is it. And Spirit still had the supply to work with. So Lambo is going to tap out yet again. GG. Spirit with a 2-0. It was uh, contested. Certainly. Not an easy 2-0, but... One that kind of... Made sense. <laughs> there were uh, there were there were what ifs. There was potential for Lambo in both of those games, but 
Assuming that Spear didn't make any huge mistake, he was set on the path to victory from minute eight in both of those games, it felt like.